Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to Junkie for a Story. My name is Tamika, and today I bring you a book review of The Comedians, Drunks, Thieves, Scoundrels, and the History of American Comedy by Cliff Nesteroff. I came across this book because I listened to WTF with Mark Marin, that podcast. And on one of the episodes, the author, well, Mark interviewed the author. And as he was talking, I was so intrigued by what he had to say that I decided to see if my local library had the book. And to my surprise, they did. So I was able to check it out. Um, I also uh, listened to it on audio and the author narrates himself. This book tells of American culture, I'm sorry, American comedy culture in the 20th century. Some of the stories are poignant and provocative. It covers prohibition, the war, mobster domination, and how it affected the industry and performers who tried to make a living in it. It covers the genesis of American television and how comedians transitioned into that medium. And it, it covers a lot of history. I was so surprised to learn what all I learned just from reading this book because I, I don't know, I, I was expecting to learn about comedians and you do learn about comedians, but it covers quite a deal of history. And I guess it does make sense because com comedians, oftentimes they, their comedy focuses a lot on current events. So it makes sense that the two would interconnect. In a subtle way, in a subtle and unintentional way, you can tell how strong patriarchy and racism was in those days. Not because the author is racist, but because there are, there are few non-European performers and women to speak of from that time period. So a lot of the names in this book, a lot of the comedians are mostly white men. <laughs> and so again, I don't think the author was trying to say anything by doing that. I, I just think it shows you the time period because I think the only two names I could think of just when I'm thinking about it right now, the only two females I can think of that he did speak of was Phyllis Diller and Joan Rivers. And I was surprised to learn that Joan Rivers, she wasn't naturally funny or she, she didn't write her own um, jokes or material. But they said, I, I forgot who the author was saying made this comment about Joan Rivers, but he's, whoever the person was said that she is a hard worker and that's why she was successful. Not because she was funny, but because she worked her butt off to perfect her persona and to work with good writers to come up with material that people would want to see. But I I don't know why. I guess because I'm knowing her in current day. I mean, even, even though she's she is deceased, obviously. But I'm saying I know her when she was already established. I, I know the established Joan Rivers. So when the time period that uh, the author covers, she was, that was in her early days. So I guess it makes sense that that's who she was in her early days. I guess she did, 
she didn't write her own material, but it must have been tough for her as a woman. And it sounds like there were, well, it doesn't sound like it. There clearly were very few women doing comedy at that time. So she really, her and Phyllis Diller, they really made it so much easier for the ones who came after them. Anyway, it's interesting to hear them talk about the beginnings of radio and television. I don't know why I keep saying them. It's just the author cliff. But I mean, I, I guess because he, he's talking about, um, he, he there's so many names in this story, but there's different people talking about the beginnings of radio and later television and how up and comers had to get noticed in those days to make it. And also again, back to the mobster, the mafia domination, they basically, I would say it sounds like up until maybe the sixties, I'm thinking somewhere around the sixties, the mafia, they dominated almost all of the comedy clubs and and then Vegas, obviously, we all know, and the, and they were all over Hollywood. So he goes over that in covering the comedians and how um, Don Rickles was brought up and how he, I mean, his career was mentioned in this story, obviously, and how, you know, he was tied to the mafia. A lot of the comedians in those I would say in the first half of the 20th century, at least the first half, they definitely had mafia ties and the mafia pretty much owned that industry and a lot of a lot of the industries in those days. And that is covered in this book. There's a lot of well-known names mentioned. And then there's some that I didn't really know. There's a Jack Benny who comes up quite often in this book. Um... A Mar- Marlton Mar- Melton Burl, I think, was another name, but I'm I'm not too familiar with that that name. Um, Rick Fox, I'm sorry, not Rick Fox, Red Fox, <laughs> the comedian Red Fox was brought up, and it was just brushed over, but. <laughs> It was mentioned how Red Fox and Malcolm X used to run together. And there was something in there that I, I I had no knowledge of. But I trust this author, so I'm I'm sure he did his research and therefore mentioned it because he, he found it to be true. So we'll take it. But it's just it's something that I was not familiar with. Red Fox is another comic genius and I'm so glad he got his acknowledgement in this story but yeah there, there's just so many names so many names um, George Burns Larry David uh, George Carlin was mentioned in here and that reminds me of how cocaine played a major role in the comedians, especially it sounds like around the seventies and eighties, it really was a character in itself. And (laughs) it was like part of the supporting cast. So it was commonly used. And yeah, that is mentioned in here. Eddie Murphy is mentioned, Richard Pryor, Carl Reiner, Albert Brooks. There's a ton of names in here. And if you're just someone who's interested in comedy, I would highly recommend you pick up this book. It definitely is a fascinating tale about comedy, American comedy. Um, I didn't know that Lauren Michaels, the one who created SNL and is the one of the executive producers of SNL, For some reason, I didn't know he was Canadian, but (laughs) that was my takeaway when they mentioned him. But (laughs) anyway, they they did mention, 
I keep saying they, I'm sorry, Cliff Nesterov. He did mention SNL and the inception of sketch comedy. Also mentioned uh, In Living Color and how Black comedians were able to get their start and how segregation and racism prevented them from going so far in their careers. And then it was it was interesting how Nesterov said that Red Fox was the first comedian to sell a million copies but of his live stand-up album. But because he was Black, I forgot the name of the, I think it's just the Recording Academy or some something like that, where they record the sales of records, but they didn't count Red Fox because he was Black and they, they didn't even acknowledge Black performers. So, so an, another person who was white received the credit as being the first comedian to sell, I think, 500,000 records, even though really it was Red Fox. According to the author, it was Red Fox who was the first, but because he was Black, it wasn't counted. So you you, you get a taste of the inequality and just the, the really tough time that certain people had. But again, it's such an interesting and fascinating tale um, just to to hear about those names and some of them I, I learned just in reading the book and then some of them I was already familiar with from growing up and listening to them and watching them. Speaking of Red Fox, if you are curious, I do know they had his stand up on YouTube and I'm telling you, he's just hilarious. So yes, I would definitely look him up on YouTube. So overall, I would say this is a great book to read. If you are interested in American comedy of the 20th century, it's mostly, I would say all of it is 20th century. I'm trying to think. Oh, you know what? They did mention uh, 9-11 and how that affected comedy. So most of the book is 20th century, but they, they do go into some parts of the 21st century. But yes, if you're looking for something that covers American comedy, 20th and 21st century, I would point you in this direction and pick this book up. And it, I, I would say it, it's a fast read. It's you will definitely just fly through this, whether the physical book or the audio. Either way, it's a great read. And then, if you are, if that piques your interest and you're in the mood for more, that's similar to that subject. I would say as far as a podcast, I really enjoy The Plot Thickens. This is from Turner Classic Movies. And each season, I think they have about three right now. Each season they have they cover a different topic. So one season it was about Peter Bognovich, the film filmmaker. Um, the second season was about Brian De Palma and that movie. I can't think of the movie, but it was it was about the movie that he made that was a, a big box office flop. And then this current season that's out right now is about Lucille Ball and um, Desi Arnaz. And it's really fascinating. So Again, if you, you're interested in just old Hollywood, I would point you in that direction. And then there's also uh, The History of Stand-Up. That's a book. I, 
I'm sorry, I didn't even write down the author's name, but The History of Stand-Up from Mark Twain to Dave Chappelle is written by Wayne Fetterman. Okay, so I would recommend that one. And then also, and the last one would be I'm Dying... Hey, I'm dying up here, heartbreak and high times in stand up. This is written by William Nodel Cedar or Nodel Cedar. I'm sorry, but <laughs> hopefully one of the two is correct as far as pronunciation. So anyway. Oh, one other thing I want to mention that was really juicy. <laughs> I forgot to mention this. Is they kept bringing up joke stealers and thievery in the comedy world. And there were some names who I was rather surprised by. Now, some of them I I really don't know, so... But there's a Sid Caesar. They called him the king of joke stealing. <laughs> and um, uh, what's his name? D.L. Hughley. I didn't know he had a reputation for being a joke thief. But apparently, apparently he does. <laughs> so <laughs> I just know him to be a comedian and one of the kings of comedy, but yeah, so the joke stealing comes up quite a bit in this book, and it's just it's all kinds of names. So that is my review of the comedians, drunks, thieves, scoundrels, and the history of American comedy by Cliff Nesteroff. I hope you pick it up and read it. It's pretty interesting. Thank you for listening and I will catch you in the next one. Bye.